Before we continue with the rest of the video, we could use your help. Click that like button to help spread the word about Watch Jojo, and also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. The truth about Walt Disney's secret life as an FBI informant will shock you. To millions of children all around the world, Walter Elias Disney was simply Uncle Walt, a friendly, father-like figure beloved for his cartoon creations. As well as proving that animations weren't just for young children, he pioneered the concept of vacation destinations to spectacular creations such as Disneyland. By the time he died at the age of 65 in December 1966, he had come to be a true American icon. There was, however, another side to the charming mustachioed Disney. Over the years, a picture emerged, portraying him as an often ruthless business operator and as a distant, difficult-to-please boss. But there's one secret that the Mickey Mouse creator almost succeeded in keeping from the world. That Disney was conservative in his politics has never been a big secret. But what relatively few people know is that the entertainment mogul was an active informer for the FBI from 1940 right up through the year he died. Or at least, that's what some historians believe. Back in the early 1990s, documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act by writer Mark Elliott for his biography, Walt Disney, Hollywood's Dark Prince, first shed light on the curious relationship between Disney and J. Edgar Hoover's FBI. Moreover, the files were examined by New York Times investigators who judged them to be authentic. In all, about 750 pages of official documents have been uncovered, and while many of the pages of the so-called Disney file have been censored, they still make for fascinating reading. Exactly when the secret relationship began remains unclear. The earliest evidence of correspondence between Disney and Hoover, however, came from 1936, a year when both men were at the height of their powers. The animator midway through his first feature-length film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and the spook heading up the FBI, which had been created just over one year before. In that very first memo, Hoover cryptically wrote, I am indeed pleased that we can be of service to you in offering you a means of absolute identity throughout your lifetime. Quite what was meant by this has, however, been the source of much contention. Historians still debate what Hoover meant by absolute identity. There have been some suggestions that it referred to a birth certificate that would dispel any notion of Disney being illegitimate. But what's clear was that this was the start of a very special relationship. It wasn't until the 1940s that Disney took his fledgling relationship with the FBI further. With Hollywood taking center stage in the nationwide hunt for communists, it appears that the animation trailblazer was only too willing to help identify potential subversives. In 1941, production of the Disney Studios ground to a halt as workers went on strike. According to some later histories, the walkout was the result of the studio head's own poor leadership and inability to keep his sizable workforce happy. To Disney himself, however, the strike was the result of communist meddling, and he was willing to testify as much. Addressing the House Un-American Activities Committee, Disney not only blamed communism for disrupting his work, he even named names. I feel there is one artist in my plant, he was the real brains of this, and I believe he's a communist. His name is David Hilberman he said. The reason for Disney's suspicions? Not only did Hilberman have no religion, but he also had spent considerable time at the Moscow Art Theater studying art direction or something. Then in 1947, Disney once again took to the stand as a principal witness as the House Committee investigated possible communism infiltration of the movie industry. But it was what was going on behind the scenes, away from the eyes of the public and even newspaper reporters, that's really interesting. After celebrating the opening of his Disneyland theme park in 1955, the owner reached out to his law enforcement buddies, appearing to offer federal agents free use of the complex. As one FBI memo noted, Mr. Disney has volunteered representatives of this office complete access to the facilities of Disneyland for use in connection with official matters and recreational purposes. But the movie mogul wasn't done there. Records show that he reached out again ahead of the opening of the Tomorrowland theme zone in Disneyland, the animator, the memo notes, raised the question as to whether it would be possible to prepare a display or demonstration of how science is employed at the FBI. The Bureau declined the offer. However, Disney did succeed in promoting the work of Hoover's G-Men through his popular Mickey Mouse Club television show. In 1958, three special episodes were aired featuring 13-year-old Dirk Metzger. 
The budding sleuth was seen touring the FBI headquarters and admiring agents in action. It was free publicity for the agency. Disney, along with several others in his organization, hoped that the special episodes would encourage Mouseketeers across the U.S. to take an interest in law enforcement. The FBI would be something which children would look up to, they believed. The FBI certainly didn't always get its own way, however. The declassified documents also reveal that Hoover and Disney sometimes clashed. For instance, in 1961, the bureau head needed to press on his Hollywood peer to make Disney's new comedy, Moon Pilot, a little more complimentary to G-Men. The scriptwriters duly obliged. Disney was less willing to bend in 1965, however, declining to make changes to an animated feline representation of an FBI agent. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the L.A. FBI offices kept a close eye on this project. Walt Disney died in 1966, leaving behind an unparalleled cultural legacy, both through his films and his theme parks. But he also left behind some unanswered questions. How complicit was he in the persecution of perceived communists? And were any of the works we know and love today censored or altered to make them more palatable to Hoover and the FBI? Please don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive everything that's new.